God like the God of Pastor Jerry Eze. I came to give God all the thanks today because I'm living in my second phase of life. On the 20th of February this year, I had gone for a meeting and I got back very early in the morning, early hours of the morning, around three. So I slept off. But I usually keep my alarm on so I can wake up for seven and join NSPPD because that's basically my life support. And when I woke up at five minutes to seven, I looked at my phone and what I saw on my phone was a message from Pastor Jerry Eze. And he said, as soon as you see this message, call me, I saw you in a flash. The reactions trailing the leaked memo from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs instructing the Accountant General of the Federation to transfer the sum of 585 million Naira from the National Social Investment Program bank account to the bank account of a private individual. The memo, which was signed by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Beta Edu, was titled Mandate for Payment of Grant for Vulnerable Groups in Akwaibam, Cross River, Lagos, and Ogun states, respectively. In a statement on Friday, January 5th, the minister's aide claimed that the transfer followed due process and that the private account belonged to Bridget Mojisola, the project accountant for the Grants for Vulnerable Groups scheme, adding that it is legal in the civil service for a project accountant to receive payments, use funds legally, and retire all receipts as evidence of the project. Well, the Accountant General of the Federation, Oluwatoni Madein, however, denied approving the minister's request, stating that no bulk money is supposed to be made to an individual's account in the name of project accountant. President Tribu told me, politics and betrayal are the same one and father. If you don't want to be betrayed, don't enter into politics. I country people, the wind where they say one blow, where a day boy prophesy, we know no say it will come that soon, no. Mm. Oh, now remember this summer where they call Dr. Better, we can go show ourselves for NSPPD, say now so Pastor Jerry is a call and that money, and come talk, say I saw you in the flash, call me. Hey, people call the one that say who you be, where Pastor Jerry is, we will message you. You could see lies in her eyes. Now, so she talk, you know, she should go come out for television, begin the they lie, begin to talk all sort of things. My country people, foul and yash don't open. Five hundred and eighty-five point one eight nine million. Only you want this one. Are the one we see. Oh, they say plenty, plenty. Still they way be say is still the coro coro. Oh, we never still find out. My country people, why this one can't disgrace NSPPD? NSPPD don't get good name for good platform. He go come on, Pastor Jerry. Eh, re, 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 ara, ra, 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 ra. He I see now one on the day they look at this one, this one where this grace goes so tired. Hey, my country people, this is a fact. Wait till she use the money to do. Hey, my country people, private accounts. She moved the money, go private account. Person we call herself humanitarian. Humanitarian minister, which means say you know the way they think about your own self. You're thinking about all oh, this one. Right? I can't make fala now the lawyer. What we know where where can't talk. Say the poverty elevation minister Betty Edu should stop insulting Nigerians amid attempt 585 million criminal diversion. People where they call themselves humanitarian say they want to reduce poverty for Nigeria. They say now rotting rice. Now they share give people which don't expire. They'll go buy the cheapest thing for market. They'll go make Make the one we be say not get quality they share give people they don't come gather the remaining money made it for keep for their say my country people hey oh this government tinubu go year um as they try one we'll wrap our head around this old matter now the epitaph will be come come out so say youth in the tell una now say this country that they chop on our future not just on our on our fifth generation they don't chop them on our children 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 they don't go see the one where they will chop for their lifetime my country people now this better story they can't make or be reality when they tell you to say come in they tell you now youth make you now wake up oh make you now take back on our country from this devilish hungry vampire so it be say that they convert 
public funds into their private pockets. Now remember, say a few days ago, we see the battle with this one where be say they still find her say she still chop money. ESCC they on the case. In fact, eh, my country people, they don't even put this one, they don't put them down. See, women also be thief. Naturally, women not be thief. We they take. We go take. We don't go cover them up, we don't open. But if a man ain't thief this money, they go thief them. They don't go take. Now take, we take. You don't understand. Someone are not to blame us. That take, that we take. <laughs> Wait to make me talk this one, I be say. When I hear with we can talk, he say betrayer and politics, they between one a papa, one a mama. When I remember say better talk, say now say one day faithful to Tinibu, now so Tinibu go walk, now so he go stand by him. Now, he don't betray him by stealing the money where he give him it, he walk. That's the betrayer. Wicked was talking about. Oh, now they see him. Um, he said, Tinibu tell and say, betrayer and politics are going together. So, which means that once you're a politician, you're a betrayer. So, what all these ministers they do that they embezzle money? It's just simple, clear. Now, the betrayer away they. The doctor said they won't do one thing, but they won't do it, they won't do another thing. Even the wicked himself. Is it pure? No. So, when I say this old thing, uh, politics is just for their own belly, it's for their own greedy self. So, until Nigerians decide to wake up and say, this is the kind of government you Nothing want. Nothing will happen. My country people are this one come bolo for our the alima can talk say that 44 billion where they accuse her of where ESC the investigates say actually what it to happen to that money now be say she mistakenly transfer an enter private account mistakenly transfer 44 billion naira into a private account. Hey, why they don't use the mistake they send up for into my account though? Hey, they for use mistake they send up to my own account. Ah! Nigeria. They say as president don't sack the humanitarian affairs minister the next thing. They say she just carry herself go as so rocky. She says she wants to see the president and they stop her for gate. Oh yeah, go back. President do not want to see you. If they call president number, don't want to your pig, don't want to answer her more. Tinubu don't turn it back against that. Sharp, sharp. He say no one see her. She did under investigation. He turn. As I want to see Bolofa, I saw so the senator, whether they call Mohamed Ali, do me contact, say, not be only better that like day inside this money. He say among Tinubu cartel, he say there plenty we want share that money. He say me the question better. However, way. he say in really thank with the president do say he take immediate action to just drop him before she come put Sansan for inside Gary. My country people, now so this one talk, oh, he say plenty people, they will be say, they never see fish out. See me they investigate where, where. He say because this Tinubu government away I over a big eye, big eye with a one big, big, big thing. He say it's too much. He say Nigeria get money scatter. Also, they also they go they borrow. He say now all those people be say they they inside. Then want share this money. My country people, my lady, video play. I don't to talk. Make a letter and play from the beginning to the end. Which I'll see put the link of my the old video of this woman where she take talk. They talk say now so in the NSPP did not so pass so there is the corner. My prayer and I be say make you not talk say he use the money to pay tight. <laughs> Maybe they not go land for there because money they take pay tight, they not fit collect them back again. Make you not talk say don't go use that to pay tight for NSPPD. <laughs> I country people by lady video play. <laughs> With reactions trailing the leaked memo from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs instructing the Accountant General of the Federation to transfer the sum of 585 million naira from the National Social Investment Program bank account to the bank account of a private individual. The memo, which was signed by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Beta Edu, was titled Mandate for Payment of Grant for Vulnerable Groups in Akwaibom, Cross River, Lagos and Ogun states respectively. In a statement on Friday, January 5th, the minister's aide claimed that the transfer followed due process and that the private account belonged to Bridget Mujisola, the project accountant for the Grants for Vulnerable Groups scheme, adding that it is legal in the civil service for a project accountant to receive payments, use funds legally, and retire all receipts as evidence of the project. Well, the Accountant General of the Federation, Oluwatoyi Madein, however, denied 
approving the minister's request stating that no bulk money is supposed to be made to an individual's account in the name of Project Accountant, eliciting varied reactions on social media. Let's take this tweet from Omotaya, who posted a video of the minister when she assured Nigerians of transparency within her ministry. This is a tweet. Well, he wrote, Better Edu assured Nigerians that the money will be transferred directly from CBN to beneficiaries. However, she took a U-turn, transferring more than half a billion naira to a single private account. Oniyelu Bridget Mojisola. Let's take a look at that video before we take more reactions. What we can assure Nigerians is the fact that this is a very transparent system that is traceable from the CBN account directly to the account of the beneficiaries. For Nigerians who do not have accounts and uh, do not have the NIN, we are actually working to open accounts and money wallets for all of these persons um, so that they can have their money sent directly to them. We would equally be pasting out the list of beneficiaries at the different communities, which would carry the uh, vulnerable pensioners, the vulnerable veterans, and the uh, wives of fallen heroes, as well as other um, areas of concern where they were not fully captured. All right, this is what we are asking for, transparency, and she did promise. This was back in October. Actually, this event was uh, during that uh, conditional transfer for 15 million vulnerable households. You would recall, even just, you know, during the Buhari administration, there was also, you know, this hula baloo, could I call it, at this point, saying that we have to use, like, you know, electronic transfer yeah. at this point. But I don't understand what happened here and where, you know, Beta Edu dropped the ball. Because it is easy. He, she has said it, that she was going to go through the CBN and it was going to be transparent. Yeah. But, you know, they've called for an investigation. Uh, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has done the right thing to call for uh, a probe at this point. But, you know, people are saying, what sort of investigation? I mean, th this is simple and clear. I believe you even read out, you know, some policies yeah. at this point. Let me take some more tweets. This is from Chooks, who wrote, uh, better should step aside while the government launch a full-scale investigation into the sleaze going on in that ministry. I have said this before, social intervention under any guise in Nigeria is a scam. A large chunk of the appropriated funds are always stolen. Well, Daniel Rega wrote, uh, better Edu is still a sitting minister despite ongoing investigation into the allegations. But Halima Shehu was quickly suspended over allegations. What a government. This reeks of double standard. Well, let me just give you a summary of this Halima story, which Omotaya detailed with the hashtag BetterGate. Uh, well, he wrote, uh, one, President Bola Tinubu a few days ago announced the suspension of one Halima Shehu, the CEO of National Social Investment Program, an agency under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation for Financial Misconduct. Two, EFCC operatives subsequently arrested Halima Shehu during interrogation. It was discovered that she moved a whooping 40 billion naira belonging to NSIPA to personal and corporate bank accounts linked to her. Three, Halima Shehu also informed operatives that she moved the 40 billion naira to private accounts linked to her because Dr. Beta Edu, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, was transferring monies from the NSIPA account to personal accounts. She reportedly alleged that over 3 billion naira has been moved so far by Beta, and her action was taken to block her from accessing the 40 billion naira. Well, that, while that conversation was ongoing, a memo written by Beta Edu to the Accountant General of the Federation seeking authorization of payment of 585 million naira to the personal account of Oniyelu Bridget for GVG program in Cross River, Akwaibom, Lagos, and Ogun State surface. By the way, Rufai, mm. we've got some, you know, information that this Bridget is still untraceable. We're still waiting to find out who this Bridget, Bridget is yes. at this point. They are going to trace yes. anybody traceable. The Bridget can remain untraceable. Yes. This is a real national matter. And please, I would like to warn, call for a forensic audit across all the ministries and people that might be involved in the matter. Mm -hmm. We'd like to call for a forensic audit, one. Number two, we'd like to see a quickened investigation. Yeah. Before you 
talk because so that we can put everything together. Let me take another a conversation that has been circulating. In the meantime, the minister is said to have approved funds for flight tickets and airport taxes for the ministry staff to Kogi, a state with no commercial airport. The approval was contained in another leaked internal memo dated November 6, 2023. The memo was titled the disbursement under the 2023 grant for vulnerable groups program in Kogi State 2023, signed by Beta Edu. In the memo, the sum of over 72 million naira was appropriated for the minister's advanced team to travel by air for an event in Kogi. Each of the minister's advanced team members, including aides, received the sum of 200,000 naira for flight tickets. 20,000 naira for airport taxi and local running expenses. The sum of 300,000 naira was earmarked for the minister's air ticket. I mean, Rufai, <laughs> I know that you earlier said that there is no, um, what do you call it, airport in uh, Kogi. No, there, I mean, there are two airports yeah, in Kogi. They are not, they are no, not commercial they are airports. Not commercial airports. You so cannot no. land in Kogi State with a commercial flight. So we need more details as to what airline took them to that particular so, event. So, so that, 72 million so, is a lot of money. So that's why At this we point. say a forensic audit yes. should suffice. A very holistic forensic audit. I think the audit should go back to any, you know, disbursement made since Better got into the office. Any memo signed, all of them should be scanned through. And it should be double scrutinized as we speak. And also, the ancillary companies that disbursements were made to should also be vetted. Because I'm seeing many stories, although not verified, of some key companies that monies and disbursements were made to. Holistically, going forward, I do not know why Pre uh, President Buhari set up this humanitarian ministry. In my own opinion, I believe it should be scrapped. A lot of people have, are, are advocating for that. Yeah. it's always a funnel pipe for corruption. Mm -hmm. And we could have run this independent of any ministry. Once you set a bureaucratic framework in place, then you open the doors to huge corruption. So going forward, I think an impact assessment should be done on the humanitarian ministry Absolutely. and probably scrapped. Nigeria does not need things like this at this point in time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyways, not today we've been doing humanitarian interventions mm -hmm. and we didn't need a ministry for it. So whoever put that idea in President Buhari's head definitely didn't do a good one. Absolutely. It should be scrapped. We thought it was going to help people, but apparently, look at the charade. So early in this government, it stinks. Yeah. The corruption in Tinubu's government, allegations of corruption stinks. In the space of how many days? We're talking about the NCI, uh, uh, NCIPA, yes. those allegations. Also now we're having this one. This allegation, it stinks and it's a blight on this administration. And they should wash themselves off of this excreta yeah. of corruption allegation. They are stinking of the excreta yes. of this. First, it was Halima Shehu. Yeah. Now we are seeing better. I do. I mean, we had from the, uh, same from the same ministry. They had the first, the uh, what do you call it, the pioneer <laughs> of that ministry also is under <laughs> investigation. We're seeing these women, um, you know, go through these horrible. I'm so I'm, yeah, she is supposed to be facing EFCC today. Well, let me take a better's uh, tweet, which she talked about integrity and trying to defend herself. She said integrity, accountability are. Uh, our watchword. Under my watch, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, no one will embezzle government funds as before. The plans to tarnish the image of this administration, my person or the ministry will amount to nothing better. We are holding you to that word. I, I really want to know if this is fake document, fake memo. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly the only thing that I would, would make it all right. Because at this point, there, you know, these these investigations are already. Oh, gee, that's the basically only thing that would make yeah. sense of this. In fact, mm -hmm. um, lawyer Femi Falano has said that just that memo in itself, yes. it did not implicate her to be investigated or perhaps invited in by the EFCC or security operatives because that memo is a demonstration of an attempt to commit felony. So even yes. without committing felony, Absolutely. it's an attempt to commit based on extant laws on um, you know, how, whether money or not should be paid into private accounts. Unfortunately, I don't see how Dr. Betaidu is going to get herself out of this mess. And I agree totally 
with that tweet that the same treatment meted out to Halima Shehu in the spirit of fairness and equity should be meted out to Dr. Edu. So, but other MDAs, mm. do you know that memo and the statement by the AGF demonstrates that, that's Accountant General of the, of the Federation, that this perhaps might be happening in other ministries. Absolutely. And Rufa, even though I get you in terms of scrapping this ministry. To, to be fair, I think we need a ministry such as this because of the peculiarity of what we're facing in Nigeria. Unfortunately, just like the NDDC and other agencies like that, it has become a funnel for just monies that, are, that magically disappear or come under spurious claims and projects where we cannot trace monies. You're saying that it is OK. And thank you for bringing that video out where she assured Nigerians that under her own tenure, in the spirit of transparency, the monies will go directly to the beneficiaries. Yes. What's happened to that plan? What is that excuse for not you know, transferring the monies directly? Then one final thing, a question for the um, Accountant General of the Federation. Yes, she mentioned that in trying to extricate herself from this mess, that she did her due diligence, she, she did not approve um, that money's being spent. What did she do afterwards? Why didn't she blow a whistle? Why didn't she raise... Well, I'm hoping that she didn't think better I do was going to go, to go forward ahead. with but it because she, it's not... The fact that she approved. advised yes. her. So I would like to know what yes. happened there because during that investigation, she must also be questioned. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, she did the right thing. Yeah. But I'm saying that beyond doing the right thing, the state of things in this country means that you must also be willing to, in order to absolve yourself from any kind of blame, also make sure you, you um, there's a whistle being blown. God like the God of Pastor Jerry Eze. I came to give God all the thanks today because I'm living in my second phase of life. On the 20th of February this year, I had gone for a meeting and I got back very early in the morning, early hours of the morning, around three. So I slept off. But I usually keep my alarm on so I can wake up for seven and join NSPPD because that's basically my life support and when I woke up at five minutes to seven I looked at my phone and what I saw on my phone was a message from Pastor Jerry Eze and he said as soon as you see this message call me I saw you in a flash that you were killed and all of that those who he said a whole lot and he said it's cancelled in Jesus' name. Amen. At that point, it was already seven o'clock. So I could not call because I knew definitely he was on the altar of fire. So I joined the altar and I prayed. And throughout that day, he kept on going, asking for, it was like, it was a miracle service. And he kept praying and he said, that bad news will not happen. Of course, in my usual way, I just kept answering, amen, amen, getting ready, praying along, and all of that. I waited till 10, I tried calling, he didn't pick. I waited till 11, I tried calling, he didn't pick. And then I finished the NWC, we went to the airport, and we got on a private jet. We got on a private jet, we were airborne. 30 minutes into that, air, into that flight, the plane some assault. This is the least I can describe. I'm just trying not to be emotional. I don't even want to be dramatic about it. But when I say I have another chance at life, it's another chance at life. For whatever reason, God kept me alive. I don't know. This plane went this way and then returned back. At this point, the seat belts were all gone. The airbags, the oxygen supply, everything was out and down. And then it went quickly up. And as everybody in the aircraft went up, hit our head, neck, everything on the roof of the plane, came down to the ground. It still threw us the second time up, hit our head on the roof of the plane, and came down. At this point, everybody in that aircraft had passed out. I was the only person seeing the aircraft turning and hitting up and down. They all had injuries. I was screaming, I will not die, I will not be buried, and I will not bury. They will not mourn in my house this year, it can't happen. I serve God, what God cannot do does not exist. And every day I go out, I go with my mantle, the mantle which we pray with during the 21 days of fasting. 
and I just reached out to my bag and I removed my mantle and I hit it on the aircraft. I said, peace, be still. Hallelujah. Peace, be still. Hallelujah. Pastor Jerry said, I already won this battle. So you cannot, I cannot die on this aircraft. They will not, it's not my obituary they'll read. they only read my victory. This year it is testimony jamming testimony. It cannot be otherwise. At some point, the plane became calm. At this point, I was the only person screaming the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. What God cannot do does not exist. This plane, you will not crash because you have a burning and shining light on top of you. It cannot happen. The plane became calm and then I started using my mantle to touch on everybody. I was calling him and this, like wake up, everybody was on the ground. They had passed out. They started coming up. The plane was going. They now had to reduce that and bring the plane down. It was very low. You could basically see what you were flying over. And the plane that is supposed to be 45 minutes from Abuja to Lagos was almost two hours. The minute we arrived in Lagos, they rushed us to Reddington Hospital. No internal organ damage no brain damage no skull fracture no spine fracture nothing no single scratch on my body what i explain to you is the list of how i can explain it that day i knew that in spite of our numbers when he says i pray for you truly he prays for you my country people in case you watch and reach over try they worry you you too much Huh? You watch our issue here? Not to try. Okay. I just decided to put this one for the end. Well, we call it yes. Yeah, say that they interview BBC, they interview person they don't die, oh. they don't bury them, oh. they don't forget them. Oh. Now, now this woman, can they come out, can they speak up? Oh, yes. He did this to me. He molested me. He did this. Now, now you get work. BBC. Ah, now, now you get work. When I remember saying that this same BBC, they come out, come talk, say they go investigate it. They say yes. You not get false certificates. It's true. true. It like they don't go out of news. Nobody they use them again. So by country, I don't know for the ending of this video. It came at the very first time when they come here. So now BOD TV body will they analyze all the trends where they happen. My country people now don't forget to like, share, and sub. Oh yeah. Wow,